Hi, I'm Jamie Cole from the Matillion Research and Innovation Team. In version 1.40 of Matillion ETL, we've added support to connect your Matillion instance to Git to store versionable items. Before we get started, you can familiarize yourself with the features of our Git support and take a look at each action you can perform in our previous video. The link is in the description below. In this video, we'll be demonstrating a suggested workflow of how to use Git and Matillion together in a real-world scenario, showing you how to convert an existing project containing jobs to be Git-enabled, promote code between two Matillion projects using a remote Git repository, perform branch-based development with multiple developers, merge branches, and finally, how to refresh a developer's working area from the most recent production code. In order to do this, we'll need three items that have been set up in advance. A Matillion instance with a development project accessible to all developers, a Matillion instance with a production project with access limited to just one user using Matillion's project permissions, and a remote Git repository. Here we're using Bitbucket. All users can read from Bitbucket, but we've locked it down so just a single user can push. In this scenario, I'll be acting as the integration manager. It's my job to manage the Matillion project and also to decide and control which changes are moved into the production project. Only I can access the production project and only I have permissions to push to the Bitbucket Git repository. I'd now like to introduce you to two other people. Hello, I'm Susanna, a Matillion developer responsible for amending and creating jobs in the Matillion development project. When I've completed a ticket or feature, I'll tell the integration manager. Hello, I'm Darlington, another Matillion developer. I also create and amend jobs in response to tickets and report my work to the integration manager. We'll now demonstrate how the features of Matillion and Git work together to allow code promotion and branch-based development, starting with the integration manager setting up the production environment, and then the development environment ready for the developers to begin making changes. You'll see there's already a couple of jobs set up. We have two transformation jobs and one orchestration job. And if I go and see the versions, you'll see we currently only have one default version. What I'm going to do now is initialize this as a Git project. I go into the Git menu in the project menu and choose init local repository. You'll see here, there's been an automatically produced commit message, although we can change it. The username has been picked up from our Matillion username and passwords, but what I'm gonna do is go and click the pencil option and add my email address in as is standard Git practice. Clicking okay, these will be persisted for the rest of the user session. When I click okay here, it's going to make the initial Git commit. You'll see here the initial commit has been created. What I want to do now is push this to Bitbucket so that we can set up our production project. What I need to do is enter the URL and my Git username and password. When I do a Git push, which is this icon here, I'll be requested to put in my Git username and password. This has now pushed all of the commits, in this case, just the initial commit to Bitbucket. If I refresh Bitbucket here, you'll see some files have been added. And if I click commit, you'll see my name against the initial commit. Now moving back to Matillion, what I need to do now is flip to the production project. So I go into the project menu and select change project. Select the production project. As you can see here, this is an empty project I set up earlier, currently with no jobs in it. What I need to do now is go back to project and our Git settings, click clone remote repository and enter our Git details again. This is the Git URL. I'm gonna select switch to master. That will mean when the clone is complete, we'll automatically switch to the most recent commit on the master branch. And I'm going to put in my Git username and password again. You'll see here, this has brought down all the commits we had before. In this case, just the initial commit. I'm gonna to switch to the initial commit, close out of our Git integration screen. What I want to do now is schedule this job to run every five minutes. The point of this will work as our continuous testing. The project will be running in the background every five minutes. So I go into the project screen and select 
manage schedules. I'm going to add a new schedule. I'll call it prod live. I'm going to make it run every hour. Then I'm going to make it run every five minutes. Also want it to run every day. And we'll be running the default version of our run me orchestration job in our production environment. I'll just test that to check it's going to be OK, which it is. Click OK and click OK again. At this point, I've successfully promoted the code from the beginning part in the development project into production. It's going to run every five minutes. While I'm here, I'm going to set up another Matillion version to act as our merging version. I'm going to call this Workspace Merge and we'll use this later. This will be used down the line to merge feature branches into the master branch. Only I can access this as the integration manager. What I need to do now is go back to our development project and set up versions to act as working spaces for each developer. I'm going to go into Manage Versions and create a version for our developer, Susanna, and another version for our developer, Darlington. We're now set up ready for our developers to begin developing. Now we have a production project set up with some known good jobs, scheduled and running every five minutes. The integration manager has also set up a Matillion version as a working space for each developer. The developers will now fix a couple of tickets they've been passed using their working version and Git branching to isolate their work from each other. As a developer, I can only access the development project. I'm going into that now. I need to switch to my specific version, which acts as my working area. I go into the Manage Version screen, hit My Version, and press Switch Version. I'm now in my own working area. Also, to fix this ticket, I now need to create a branch. I go into Project, click Git, and press the Create Branch option. I'm going to call this Dev Susanna Feature 1. I click OK and the branch is created. I now need to fix my ticket. In this case, I need to create a new transform job, which I'm going to call job A, and I'm going to add this to our existing orchestration job. Normally, I test this in my environment, but here we're going to say it's worked successfully, and I now need to commit the changes to my branch. I go into projects and select Git again, press the commit button, select the items that have changed and add my commit message. When I press the pencil icon, I can go in and add my username and email address. My username has automatically been populated as my Matillion username, and I'm just going to put in my own email address. I click OK here and the first commit has been made. I'm now going to tell the integration manager that my commit is complete. I've just logged in and because I'm just a developer, I can only see the development project. I'm going to go into the dev project and switch to my version. Find dev underscore Darlington and click switch to version. I need to create a Git branch for my work to go into as well. So I go into the Git project menu, click the create branch icon and call this dev underscore Darlington underscore feature underscore one. You'll see here the head of my new branch is still at the initial commit because that's the point where I made the new branch from, which is correct. I'm going to add a new transformation job called job underscore B and add that to our orchestration flow. Normally at this point, I test the job, but here we're going to assume that the job has passed the test successfully and I'm going to commit it to my branch. I go into the project, choose Git, click the commit button, making sure we're checking into the correct branch, choose the items that have changed and add the commit message. Pressing the pencil icon allows me to enter my email address, which is required for all Git commits. Click OK and the commit has been made. You can see here that I'm further ahead from the master branch, as is Susanna. 
This diagram shows exactly how the Git tree looks. I'm now going to tell the Git integration manager that my ticket is complete and ready to be merged. The integration manager has heard from the developers that they've completed their work and that the changes have been tested and passed in their environments. The changes have been made in individual Git branches. This has resulted in two new transform jobs and two changes to the existing orchestration job. It's now the job of the integration manager to merge these branches into the master branch, test and put the resulting merged jobs into production. However, first the changes need to be pushed into the remote Git repo by the integration manager. I'm now going to log into the development project and go into the Git menu. You can see the latest state of the Git tree here, including Darlington's commit and Susanna's commit. I want to push these changes to the remote Git repo, so I hit the push button and type in my username and password for Git. Only I have permissions to push to the remote Git repo, so if any of the developers tried to do this, they'd receive an error. You can see here, all of the branches have pushed successfully. Now I need to flip into the production project. So I go to our project menu, click switch project and choose the production project. Because I want to merge in Susanna and Darlington's changes, I'm going to switch to our merge version we created earlier by going to the manage version screen, hitting workspace merge and clicking switch version. This version is currently pointing at the same commit as the default version this is because we created the version from our initial commit earlier. What I need to do now is a git pull to bring down the new changes to the production project. Go into project, select git, press the git pull icon, and again, enter your git username and password. This will pull down all of the git commits from the Bitbucket repo into the production project. You can see here it's brought down Susanna's change and Darlington's change and the git tree now looks exactly like it does in the development project. Currently, the merge space that we're in here, the merge version that we're in here, is pointing at the same commits as our initial commit. This is actually correct as you need to switch to the commit that you want to merge into so what I'm going to do now is merge Susanna's commit into our initial commit in the master branch. To do that, I make sure I'm in the master branch, which I am, and I choose the merge icon next to the commit that we want to merge in, in this case, Susanna's commit. You'll see here, we get the branch that we're merging into, in this case, master, and descriptions of the commits that we're merging. Matillion will also suggest a commit message and we're going to stick with the default. You'll see here my git username and git email have automatically been populated. So I click OK. And the merge is complete. If I go into our orchestration job, you can see the original job one and job two from our initial commit. And here we've brought in Susanna's job A and also the version of the orchestration job that will run job A. What I need to do now is merge in Darlington's change. I go into project, select git again, make sure we're on the commit that we want to merge into, which we are. This is the new commit created by our previous merge. And I choose the merge icon next to Darlington's commit and say we want to merge that commit into the master branch. And again, we'll stick with the message suggested by Matillion. Click OK. You'll see here a conflict has occurred. This is because the orchestration job, Run Me, was amended by both Susanna's change and Darlington's change, so we've hit a merge conflict. Hitting back will take you back to the merge screen where we get a choice of what we want to do with the conflicting items. Here, the only conflicting item is the Run Me orchestration job, and we can choose whether to keep our version or the version coming in from their commit. Here we're going to choose ours, click OK, and we'll be dropped back into the master branch where you can see that it has brought in Darlington's job B, but because we chose to keep our version of the orchestration job, Darlington's job's not on there. What we need to do now is fix that by adding the missing information to the orchestration job and create a new commit. 
go back into Git, click the Create Commit button, choose what we want to do in this case, just the modified orchestration file and give a commit message. Click OK and you'll see our new commit has been made. So we have the latest code available in our Bitbucket repo. I'm now going to push these new changes to Bitbucket by hitting the push button and entering my git username and password. What we want to do now is put this new commit live, e.g. into our production default version, which is scheduled to run every five minutes. What I'm gonna do now is switch our version back to our default version. This is where the schedule is. What I need to do now is to switch this default version to point at the correct git commit. Go into the git menu and hit the switch version checkout button for the commit that we want to bring into this version. In this case, it's the new commit we just made in the last step. Click OK and our default version has been updated with Susanna's job, Darlington's job and the full orchestration job that we created in the previous step. Any schedules that were previously referencing RunMe have been updated to reference this new version of RunMe. So effectively, this RunMe version is now live and going to run every five minutes with the schedule we created earlier. When the schedule runs, it will run the new version of the jobs representing both changes made by the development team. We have successfully made some changes to our original jobs using Git branching to keep these isolated. The integration manager has merged both of these changes into the master branch, resolving a conflict along the way, and both of these changes are now running in production. This has been one full cycle of our recommended workflow for branch-based development and promotion to a production project using Git. There's just one more part to show you. I've now been tasked with implementing another change. However, my working space is now out of date with the live jobs since it's missing Darlington's work. I'll need to refresh my working version from Git. I'll go into my development project, switch to my working version by going into the version screen, clicking Dev Susanna and switch version. You'll see here, this is the state of the last time I made a commit. I don't have Darlington's job and Darlington's job is not on my orchestration job. What I need to do now is a git fetch to pull down the most recent changes that the integration manager checked into Git. I go into Git, select the Git pull button, and enter my username and password. I have permissions to fetch from Git, but not to push. This has brought down all the new commits, including the ones made by the integration manager, which is the one I want to switch to. Click the checkout button, click yes, and you'll see now that both my original changes in Darlington's job B have now been brought down. My working version is now up to date with the latest production code, which is a good place to start working on this next ticket. So that was a demonstration of a suggested workflow using Git and Matillion together in a real world scenario. For more information on Git integration or to start a free trial of Matillion, please visit matillion.com. Thanks for watching.